parts. The parts I'm using are going to be the Daniel Defense Rock and Lock rear sight, the Rock and Lock Micro T1 mount with the height adjuster that actually puts us in a true co witness, Rock and Lock front sight, and X300 UB. Now, some of you had difficulty remembering which way that front sight goes. The serrations that you see here on the back always face the shooter. These are designed to kill any flash off the sun. So this always faces to the rear. Also, this flat edge right here is designed to play nice and nest with those buttons. So the proper orientation of these parts is always like this. Okay, um, I've got two bins. I'll show you what this is here in a few minutes. I've got two bins. I've got long ladder panels, short ladder panels. And um, what I do is I seat all the pieces where they need to go first before I start doing anything else. When it comes to these rock and lock pieces, here's what you guys need to understand. They literally mean rock and lock. You place one edge and you hook it. Oh, by the way, when you're doing this, once you've got your optic mounted to your base, cover it with the bikini cover before you start messing with it. You place it and you basically do this to it. And that's it. And now it's on the rail. And someone's like, oh no, I scratched it. No, actually you didn't. I'll show you. See? Didn't scratch anything. These mounts are precisely machined to fit. Daniel Defense knows what they're doing. And they've made really high quality parts. So what I do is I place it to the forward most position but you never ever, in fact, I'll show you that up close, never, never ever exceed that line right there. Years ago I was out of class and one of the guys shows up and actually I can't do it because of this. He didn't have one of these, he had another, another upper with another uh, handguard on it, but he had taken his mount and he'd mounted it right here. He had a mount that was large enough that had a forward and a rear um, locking you know cross piece and so they were here and here and like here or something right so he had that he had the optic right on the bridge between upper and handguard and as the class progressed everything began to move because his gun was some you know ghetto build and he said I don't know what's going on with zero shifting and I was like well dude your hand your 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 uh, your optic is too far forward it needs to be no far, no farther forward than this. Now I know that someone's going to ask. Actually, I'll, I'll finish the thought. So, anyways, uh, we got him straightened out, got his optic moved back, and everything was fine. Um, someone's going to ask, why is my optic so far forward when I like to have my optics further back? Well, the reason for that is, hang on a minute, let me get this right. The reason for that is um, this being a Mark 18, Mark 18, it the Mark 18 has a visual appearance. From day one, when we saw the Mark 18 come from the Crane Arsenal, we all knew that the Mark 18 had a certain look to it. And this is historically the look that my favorite, which is the Daniel Defense Mark 18, well, my favorite is mine, but the Daniel Defense Mark 18 is the close second, and it has a visual appearance of sights, light, and optic spaced like this. So right there. And all you really have to do is just place your screws and just kind of wiggle and they'll fall right in. Uh, this is 25 inch pounds. So take your torque wrench. Like I said earlier, always verify your torque specs before you start applying stank on anything. Because you don't want to be that guy. Take, take the nice fat piece and all you do is you place it and you guard it, you pinch it with your fingers so that it doesn't skip off and cause damage. Because the damage that this gun is going to get should be from me using it, not me building it. And every time that it rotates, you should just, you should just be allowing it to rotate right between your fingers so that it's not skipping off of that screw. Everything that you do here is done in a slow and controlled fashion. There is nothing about an AR-15, or at least a modern AR-15, that should require beating, unless that's just part of the assembly process, but when it comes to dressing a gun out, you should not be beating on anything. Slow and steady wins the race. Down to the bottom. 
hang on to it and rotate. Make sure that this is dead center because what you're going to end up with, if this goes to one side or the other, you're going to end up with that little mark right there, which is what I did years ago. I miscalculated before I started putting stank on it, and I heard, and I went, yeah, that's not going to heal. Can't put a Band-Aid on that. Happiness. Oh, I love that sound. Whenever you can, obviously slide it from the end, but these are designed to rock and lock. Actually, that one can go on. Perfect. Okay, now when you're doing the front end, the Surefire X300UB, and I would suggest a UB, not a UA, I believe is what it is. The UB has the screw. The UA has the cross clamp for going onto a handgun. This one requires three rail panels, or three ladder panels, underneath the light. This is crucial, guys. Cover, when you're talking about Picatinny, and also other handguards, cover your handguard. Um, take away any resonance issues that you possibly can. Because vibration is a big problem. If you, the more vibration you can reduce when you're doing this, the better off you're going to be in the long run. Tighten here. Here's a little, here's a little training tip for you guys. Take a penny, preferably, yeah, that's a copper one. Take a penny, a real copper one. Put it into that slot and put as much stank on it as you want. Because I promise you, you're not going to be able to get enough rotational force off of a penny to damage this light and also because it's copper it wipes away. You're welcome. Now front sight post goes on, rock and lock and one of the things you can do to assist yourself is hook here and hook here with your index fingers and place your thumbs on the pick here and drag and it helps get this across without with the least amount of you didn't even hear it click did you? with the least amount of opportunity to cause any marring to your handguard. Place it, cross screw goes through, and check this out. Look, look at that fit. Isn't that cool? Uh, if I remember correctly, the X300UB 1000 lumen from Surefire was designed first. Then Daniel Defense created a front sight post that played nice with that angle right there. So the idea is forward for momentary, down for constant, or up for constant. And it doesn't matter if you're if you're shooting right-handed or left-handed. The uh, the motion is always the same: forward, down, or up. Great light. My very close second favorite to this light is going to be the Inforce product. Um, but uh, this, from a visual standpoint, is correct to the to the Mark 18. Screw goes in place. And tighten, 25 inch pounds, and all kinds of wonderfulness happens. Slow moves for this last little bit, slow moves. Done. Now, all we start doing is covering rail panels. So the initial, the initial bit of coverage is done with ladder panels, big pieces. Nothing goes here. Um, actually, I'm going to move these back. I want the, the solid pieces to be back here because this is where I'm gripping this. And you're going to see what's, go, what's going to go here in just a moment. But this is where I'm gripping this. So I want the, the uh, continuous unbroken pieces to go here first. So you're always looking for symmetry. Why? Because symmetry matters. Someone's going, no, really, why? Because symmetry matters, bro. Actually, that's can't use that piece. Oh, bruh. Now I can't use that. I cut a chunk off of that, so now i got to use this. So now this, this guy's got to come off. 
You see why I like the reaction rod so much? As I'm dressing rifles out, all I'm doing is just rotating it. All right, now we go to the small pieces. Blam! How's that for a first one right out of the bin? Nope, too long, too long, too long. Really? 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 Oh, you guys are going to be difficult today. That's what it is. Finding symmetry today is going to be difficult. Bruh. Bruh. It's going to be one of those days. Huh? I'm not cutting any more panels, man. You are deluding yourself. I'm not cutting any more panels. Nope. Shh, 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 shh. All right, guys, watch. I'm almost done dressing this out with rail panels. I've got to put one over here. I'm going to make I'm going to make a piece that matches this piece here by cutting two links off. But I wanted to show you when you're doing this, you place it on a hard surface, and if you're cutting two of them off, you place the blade as flat as you can on the leading edge of the last ladder panel, and that's where the first cut gets made. You place the blade and you apply straight down force and you sever that angle as cleanly as possible and then you place it and just like these pieces it's rock and lock place that's covered that's covered that's covered underneath the light is covered this side is covered and now we go to the bottom now the bottom is a standard equation that I've done for years. Let me finish cutting this piece real quick. All right. The bottom is the standard equation that I've done for years. And the way it works is this goes back here. And this is my marker. You're going to see what for in just a moment. All right, these are the XTM hand stop kits that I purchased. This one is specific in OD green and I love these things. I've been using them for years and um, one of the reasons I really like them is that they're very well made and they're very dense. It's really hard to break this stuff including melting it. It's really hard to damage this. And the way it works is it creates a, uh, the perfect cantilever effect when you're holding the gun to drive forward into that light. So all you do is loosen it just a little bit until you can create a gap in it like that. Place it where you want it to be and then drag it down, pinch it together and these things already come preloaded with Loctite right on the hardware. And you just tighten it until that gap closes up. Beautiful, beautiful. And the next piece is the large piece. It's a spacer. And these little guys, do not put them together here in the open air. Because if, if once you lock them, they're a booger to get loose. But I will show you the way they go on is like this. So you introduce one side, then the other, and then you push. And they now they've locked. Now, when you want to get these apart, if you take a look, come on. If you take a look, there and there are two little grooves on opposing sides. Now watch. Actually, you know what? I will do this in a fashion that you guys can appreciate even better. You take two bullets and you push one bullet into one groove, one bullet into the other groove, and you push in and pry up, and I mean gently. Push and pry, push and pry, push and pry, push and pry. And see how it's creating a gap now? You take the rim of the casing, place it in that gap, and rotate. And it allows you to pull the panels off without damaging them. If you snap these little boogers off, you're done. You can just kiss that piece goodbye. So once again, place it, push, snap and lock, and you're good to go. And by the way, this, get it away from your workbench area. 
you do not want live ammo on the workbench. That's how live ammo finds its way into guns and dumb things happen. All right, the next piece is basically what would technically be the hand stop, but for me it's a, it's a cantilever position. Locked in. Last piece goes here. This little guy is going to go here. Last piece in place. And then I use a small nav light. I bought one of these years ago, and I thought, well, that's a groovy little light. Just a simple little light. I want to, I want to say it's mission first tactical. Slide it in place, and actually, let's put two pieces of ladder panel there. Like I said earlier, guys, ladder panel everywhere you can possibly get them to go, and I mean everywhere. You want a dampening effect on that handguard. And you'll be amazed at how much better your gun feels if you dampen off every and any vibration you can find to isolate. And all this is, is just a red light for navigational purposes. And you'd be surprised how in darkness this makes a big difference. And that's it. Now it's dressed out. Alright, now I take the SBR lower receiver. First pin goes in. Place my thumb right here between the two surfaces so that this doesn't swing down and impact the handguard and ding it, which is one of the other reasons why you want to have ladder panels. So, create tension right there. Put it on your face so that it doesn't swing down that way. Oh, totally forgot to lube this thing. Hang on a second. Hang on. Hold the phone. Hold the phone. Totally forgot to lube it. When you take your lower receivers off your uppers, always push in your takedown pins. All right, lubrication. AR-15s like to run wet. Don't be the guy that says, no man, well I got a special treatment in my gun and it can run bone dry. Please don't be that guy. Lube the gun. The gun likes lube. In to the barrel extension. In to the upper receiver. Extreme Duty Gun Oil by Lucas. Love it. I buy it online, but you can also buy it at, I think O'Reilly's actually stocks it, which I think is kind of cool. Um, when, Lucas Extreme Duty, when Lucas Extreme Duty Gun Oil got into the, uh, the gun oil business several years ago, I went, oh, now I'm done. And a buddy of mine goes, why? I said, because Lucas Extreme Duty, or because Lucas is a lubrication company. That's what they do. Okay, um, charging handle. My favorite is the uh, Mod 4B from uh, BCM. It's a gunfighter charging handle. Gunfighter handle Mod 4B. Place it in the upper. Basically you go forward, down, back, and it drops. So it's forward, down, back, it drops in. Forward ever so slightly. Take your Nickel Born bolt carrier group. If your bolt is all the way forward, just swing it. The inside of this is lube, not the outside because it's nickel boron. And it's seated. Injection port cover closed. Muzzle on the workbench. Pinky holds the upper. Take down, uh, take down pins out. And then swing it up. Uh, front pin goes in. You pin, oh by the way, um, if you have it, uh, tension screw is set. And the tension screw, this is an arrow lower, and uh, this is my workhorse. And it's set to like every single upper receiver that I have with just a little bit, little bit of give and take. So now you pinch, push, and thing of beauty. And there you go. There is the Tier 1 Citizen Mark 18. It's built, guys. It's back. Um, last thing is... Last thing is the Tier 1 Citizen two-point sling. And because the, oh, I'll tell you, just that right there. Just, this feels like a whole different animal. This is the, okay, hang on. Hang on, let me get something. Okay, when I, when I boinked this on the workbench, it had a very distinctive feel to it. Um, it felt like a, like, like a nice chunky weapon. Um, just that alone, that feel right there, is a, there's a frequency, a dead chunk that goes through the gun instead of a little bit of a sproing that goes through most of the AR-15s that I have. Um, 
but I pay a price. Six pounds, 13 ounces. Okay. Yeah, six, six pounds. Actually, let me show you what I just did. The scale that I have is so sensitive that when you blow on it, it, it'll register. And that tells me that that is a true weight on that weapon. Six pounds, 13.1 ounces. So we're going to call that six pounds, 13. Now watch. I take my other 10.3, put it on the scale. <laughs> Dude, you can't even make that up. I, honestly, guys, I didn't even know it was going to do that. You cannot make that up. Both guns are essentially identical, except for optic. Trigicon RMR 06, um, aim point T1, Inforce WML, Surefire X300UB, but they're both 10.3 inch barrels. Now, of course, this is a mission first tactical stock, as opposed to a Magpul CTR with the extra rubber butt pad, but but from a, from a mechanical standpoint, these weapons are identical. That one weighs one extra pound heavier than this one does. And this one is set up for teaching, which is why I've got sling mounts on both sides. Well, same here. The BCM QRF automatically has sling mounts on both sides. So everything I have is set up for teaching. So these guns are designed to basically behave the same way. Every once in a while everything comes together like that and the numbers ring perfectly true. Um, but yeah, one pound difference between the two guns because um, you're just, you know, you're, you're just dealing with, with more meat here. There is, there is a full extra pound there and that's something to take into account. Alright, let's finish this gun out. Um, when you're applying your Tier 1 Citizen 2-point sling, you have a short end, bungee is here. You have a short end, uh, bungee ends here, and you have a long end. Long end goes away from you, short end goes nearest to you. You take, you take control of the weapon in your shooting hand, and the, the sling goes over the back of the stock, and the end of the QD right here goes tucked into that corner, so you hook in, and the end of the QD goes into this corner. The sling goes over the back. It goes along the front. You hook it in, and this is anti-rotational. You hook it in and it's locked. And now, what I end up with is a sling setup where I have just enough tension to push out in front of me to use the weapon. And when I don't need the weapon, I let it go back and it pulls back against me. Uh, I also now have a setup that when I push away from me and rotate to the rear for storage, the weapon stays put on my body where I put it. But yeah, this is, uh, this is my Mark 18 setup. And I'll get you guys out on the range here in the next day or so because it's been really cold lately. I'll get you guys out on the, on the range the next couple days and show you how to zero it and uh, show you what this thing can do at distance. Well, there you go. There is the... Tier 1 Citizen Mark 18. It's back, guys. It's back. I've missed you, buddy. <sighs> I've missed this weapon. Stuart, thank you. Alright, guys. Let's take it out onto the range and get it zeroed.